Welcome back at the Border Sessions uh, in, in The Hague, two days of interviews with the speakers of this uh, uh, inspiring uh, uh, event. Um, uh, Andrew Smart, uh, welcome. Thank you. Um, Hi. Uh, you, you've been here for two days. Yeah. So, so what, what is your impression of the event? Yeah, like I was saying, I mean, it's, it's really great. Uh, it's, it's exceeded all my expectations and I'm really inspired uh, yeah. by all of the talks and the speakers. And uh, you've been, you've, you are one of the speakers, so, yep. so what was the, the message or what was your, your most important thing you wanted to, to give your audience um, uh, what I, you take away from that? I think what I wanted to convey or, or make people, the takeaway for me was uh, to um, really question fundamental assumptions about reality and consciousness and things like information. Because uh, the, the point of my book was to do a kind of very fundamental philosophical examination of a lot of the concepts we take for granted like computation like information um, and so that's I, I try I explore that a lot in the book and I, I tried to make the talk a bit uh, to, to make people think at, at a very deep but also simple fundamental level yeah can, can you give me one example um, well so just for like with information for example like in science and in technology you people throw around the word information all the time but it's very poorly defined and it's often context dependent so in one field they'll use information in one way in another field they use it another way and when we talk about information on the internet and what I talk about in the book is that it's really information is really always observer relative or it's there's always you need some person to whom the information is relevant or creating it and so I wanted to question this idea that information exists uh, independently of our society or of our mind and so and this gets back to a debate in AI uh, about whether the universe is made of information and, th and then I even start to question like is is information inside computers or if you start to examine is it inside your brain or where where exactly and when exactly exactly is information yeah so 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 was your goal to your goal was to to, to make people think and l let them leave the room uh, yeah, and maybe by the book to get the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer no, is in the no, end, it's the, the, last, the, the last chapter. The book is more <laughs> questions than answers for sure. But um, yeah. no, and I wanted to, you know, d of course, provide people with a background on the, uh, the neuroscience of psychedelic drugs and what that could potentially teach uh, the project of AI. Yeah. Was uh, about that because the first sentence I read here on the side of the border sessions is, yeah. "Can we build a robot that trips on acid?" Yeah. Can we? Um, I don't. I don't know, <laughs> and I. I think I st the book starts with that. That kind of simple, and maybe I don't know. If maybe it's, people don't think it's a serious question, but I, I. I use that as kind of an entry point to all of these really old, deep philosophical questions, which, despite all of our progress, I don't feel like they're resolved, or we can't. We don't. We don't know the answers to a lot of these things, but we behave as if we do. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the. But I, I don't see, so for example, and I, I talk about this famous quote from uh, the AI workshop in 2001 where um, a bunch of scientists and, and engineers and uh, neuroscientists and physicists got together to discuss machine consciousness. And the one thing they could agree on at this workshop was that there's no fundamental physical law or something operating in the universe that would prevent machine consciousness. And so that was kind of their, they didn't know any reason why it's not possible. Yeah based on what they knew about physics and about the brain and about computers at that this was in 2001 I think it's still the case that you can't rule it out um, so it, I just kind of extended that to uh, what about altered stages of machine consciousness mm -hmm. and what what would those mean yeah. uh, um, artificial intelligence is uh, of course is not new at all but at the moment it is everywhere yeah uh, but do you sp but people seem to use it for everything as well, yeah. isn't it? They, if, if you if you just have a uh, an, an, uh, recommendation engine, simple, uh, who bought this and bought that, they, they they already seem to call it artificial intelligence. Yeah. And and, and, and what is you, so um, your definition? I don't you don't have to give me that definition, but yeah. But what do you see as artificial intelligence? So I think this is an interesting distinction. That's. <coughs> You know, it's not accepted by everyone, but they talk in in the field. You talk about weak artificial intelligence, which is exactly what you described, like systems that can predict what you're going to buy yeah, tomorrow yeah, or, or whatever. Yeah, Spotify that helps me. And, uh, yeah, it knows uh, your music. Uh, yeah. That's that's weak artificial, and that's that's really just using very sophisticated statistics, or sometimes not even very sophisticated, but just no. 
putting the data together in yeah, a way. And analyze if, if there are uh, 10 people that listen to the same yeah. tracks and then the other one I'm like. And based to on your well. name, you're a yeah. male, they, it knows you're in Holland, it, it knows your history, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it can, it can kind of infer what kind of music you're into. Yeah. And, but then there's the, the, the strong AI, which or strong artificial intelligence, which is literally an artificial mind. So something we would identify as conscious and, you know, we would, just like I, when, I, when we speak to other humans, we, have, we know that it's another, we're dealing with another mind. Yeah. And so the, the dream or whatever, maybe, maybe it's crazy and, you know, it's, it's got, it's inter, it interacts with all this, this male dream of power over machines and things like that or of nature. But I, I find it fascinating, this, this dream of, of really creating an artificial mind. And that's the strong, that would be strong artificial intelligence. And if, I think we're, we're very far away from being able to do that. Yeah. But, it's, but it's still a fascinating Yeah, but uh, and, and uh, so, so, so can, you, can you give me an idea? During the last couple of years, have, have there been uh, big improvements? Have there been, have, are um, we setting huge steps? Are we? Yeah, I think, well, what's interesting is I think the weak, the so-called weak AI that's becoming so prevalent is just based on the fact that computers are getting more, it's Power. Moore's law. Yeah interacting so these models like the neural networks and the techniques the AI the machine learning concepts are really old but back I mean in the 80s and 90s when they were first kind of getting widespread and they're but they're even older than that um, you, we didn't have the computing power to yeah. do anything useful with these models so people thought like well they're they're interesting and it's kind of inspired by neural the, the brain but it doesn't but now that we have the, the computing capacity to feed these models you know, just a huge amounts of data, and, and you can make a model with millions and billions of parameters. Then they work really well. It yeah. turns out, and you or when you can, when you make a neural network with many many layers as opposed to just one or three uh, that you used to be able to do. But you, it's not a it's not a fundamentally different model. It's mm -hmm. just much bigger yeah, and yeah, more yeah. powerful. Yeah. Um, so the advances. I don't know that we're advancing toward anything that's human like. No. Intelligence, yeah. we're, but we're, but but neuroscience, but neuroscience is playing a bigger and bigger role in AI. They're going back to the brain. Uh, so, so what, what what makes it so uh, so difficult to, well, to almost imitate say the, the human brain? What makes us? What makes our brains our so brain, special? So, but yeah, in the world, I think the the capacity for us to generate novel, truly novel solutions to things and be creative, and somehow our brains can can take the signals and things we get from the environment and combine them in ways that are very useful but that you could never predict just based on the gathering of sensory information. Somehow yeah. our brains, um, and, and this leads a little bit to the connection to hallucinations uh, in, that I talk about in the book. Yeah. And so <clears throat> hallucinations are, are kind of, uh, they're re I, I argue that they're real perceptions, they're just not useful except insofar as they might lead to a, a, a novel solution to something that would be useful that, that you would never be able to plan or that you would never be able to preconceive of yeah. based on your experience. So I think that's the, the role of consciousness, for uh, human consciousness, is to allow us to react, to improvise basically in the, mm -hmm. in the world because we often don't have prepared behavioral routines for dealing with situations. We need to, on the spot, yeah. Uh, come up with a, a response or even not, not necessarily in response but even d when we dream or come up with scientific theories or write books or do music all of these things um, are, are extraordinarily difficult to model yeah. uh, but the brain solves them yeah it's, easy, it's seemingly easily yeah, yeah. But do, we, do, we, do we understand the, the, the brain uh, enough no I mean no? I think we're far from I, uh, one thing in my research for the book, you know, and I, I, my background is in, in cognitive science too, and like, the more we kind of discover, you, you kind of open, you, you kind of break through, you make a breakthrough in one area, but it's kind of a breakthrough into an even bigger mystery. And then like, oh, we've, we understand how this, these cells work together and how these brain regions cooperate, but then that leads to the next question of what do they do, you know, how do they interact with this, the, the broader system in your experience and that so the we, we're solving a lot of questions but at the same time as we solve problems we're creating new deeper, deeper mysteries yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so but I, I, when I when I look at you you find that um, intriguing yeah <laughs> absolutely I mean that's what's uh, that's what's it's not frustrating uh, it, right right yeah it's not um, no I don't think it's frustrating it's it's very fascinating and it, it kind of 
leaves you with this uh, sense of awe or, or wonder that like uh, and I, you know and because I think often there's a resistance to you know people don't want to reduce the soul or whatever to simple physics or the brain you know yeah and, and they're still the strong people are very strongly dualist even if they're not religious people don't like to think of of the brain as a phys- you know of consciousness as a physical yeah thing um, but I think the more the more you delve into that the the more fascinating it becomes yeah um, so so what um, what what is next for you what are what are the plans you are working on um, you know I'm really interested um, in I'm interested in everything <laughs> yeah so I have a hard time <laughs> That's focusing and in, yeah, yeah and yeah. I've, I've been really inspired by uh, the talk the, the people I've met here in the talks yeah and things but um, I do a lot of I, I write a lot on the internet and I'm, I'm working on probably another philosophy yeah. philosophical book um, so about how do you make your money uh, I work so I work for a big company in Switzerland. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that I want. This is your hobby. That's th- this is my side thing. Of course, I, I would love it for it to be my yeah my my living. But yeah, I have a day job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, when you um, so so, so in, in are there things you think say in 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 in, well, in, in which whichever future um, robots or, or artificial intelligence or whatever uh, are not. Uh, able to do it's not able to do oh um, I don't know I don't know if you can say that I think it's an empirical question we just have to find out yeah Um, I don't know that there's I I don't believe in you know that you can say like in principle computers or robots could never do this I I really I think it's I don't think we can rule that out and and like I I think you know machine consciousness um, is kind of the ultimate physics physics experiment mm-hmm. if we could really make a conscious robot it would prove I think that f- consciousness is real it's physical and you know it would it would solve it would solve all these debates in the philosophy of mind yeah um, but I think fundamentally it would be kind of like building a I mean it's a horrible analogy but building the, the atomic bomb or like these huge these huge engineering problems that yeah. have gone on in the past it would be a similar uh, kind of a a, a, approach. So, what what would happen when when, when we would have say um, um, well, robots with with uh, with the conscious? Um, uh, what can you program ethics? Yeah, and th- this is really a, a huge debate. Um, mm. And what so if if it's a truly an autonomous thing, yeah, this could, thing, yeah, um, that's that's like us. Would it hopefully it would learn ethics? Like yeah. w- like we do, yeah. and there's a big debate, of course, in behavioral psychology and e- evolutionary psychology. Do we inherit our ethics genetically somehow, or is it just simply by growing up and learning uh, culture? in our in our, in culture in, thing, in, in yeah. our social? And the, I, I mean, I think it's a false dichotomy to say it's 50% genes, you know, yeah. or whatever. And but there's a lot of research going on now about ra- raisable AI. So you you start off with a very simple little robot that has what we think are the learning mechanisms yeah. that babies have and you and you let the robot learn on its own rather than programming yeah. where you would somehow figure out the algorithm for ethical behavior and write it down uh, yeah. and it would run this software yeah. it would cha- it would be able to to come up with its own ethics yeah. that are hopefully yeah. In harmony with uh, with our own, Ours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's I mean it's a huge debate now in with with the you know the future of life institute and and a few years ago Elon Musk, you know gave ten million dollars to research uh, how do we keep AI safe and yeah. beneficial, so it's but like he seems, yeah, he seems to be quite afraid of the uh, or yeah. at least uh, I, you know I don't know and I always wonder if he has seen some stuff that's not public that he's like yeah. oh my god if this gets this is crazy stuff. But I'm not. I'm not as afraid right now because I. I mean, at least what I know, and I'm no. I'm no expert. But like, it, it's. It's. What's more scary to me is our 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 political and social reaction to the technology and letting you know letting a handful of people who work at Google or wherever make start to be able to have enormous amounts of power over our daily lives. Yeah. And that they can do that through technology, but it's not the technology. Itself, it's more the institutions that yeah. we, we need to counteract yeah. their. But but they've moved so fast and and kind of spread out so fast through and we've you know enthusiastically like, woohoo devices and yeah. you know what I mean we've yeah. we've, 
enthusiastically put ourselves in this position, but now we need to, I think, very much start to develop the social and political structures to counter, you know, to... Yeah. Quit. But it's very hard because... It it's a difficult thing, isn't it? For, for example, because you, you, with your, say, science background, I, 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 you know, on the show I very often interview people uh, researching at the university, etc. Yeah. And in all the fields there are, when Google thinks it's, a, it's, it's an interesting thing, yeah. they, they, uh, they easily uh, uh, get, get a lot more money to, yep. to, to research, and get a lot more people uh, yeah. to do it. Yep. Uh, Facebook, the same thing, of yep. course. Yep. So, so, they are, so they are not only huge as, as a, a, a search uh, thing or a browser yep. or a thing, yep. but in, 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 in all science, science actually. And, and, and the, the, you know, the real uh, stars, I would say, of AI research who used to be in academia, like from NYU and Stanford, they're all now at Facebook yeah. or they're at Baidu or they're, they've been, I mean, it sounds terrible to say, but they've been bought more or less. And of course, you know, if you're making an academic salary and some company comes to you and goes like, you can have unlimited freedom, you can have all this data, you can do what you want, but we'll give, you know, we'll pay you half a million dollars a year or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. It's, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, we understand it's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but but that that becomes the question is then there there's got to be a recognition of the bias going into AI research yeah both from a cultural perspective but also the fact that most of the AI research now is being done by Facebook Google it's, they they've sucked out uh, from the from the academic field the the kind of the best people yeah. Yeah, yeah so. and, what, and of course what we saw recently, and it's only a small example, of course, of, of, the, of the power, but of course Google decides what our uh, uh, search results are. Yeah. Um, uh, Facebook decides uh, in, through the algorithm uh, what the news is that we see in our, in our timeline. Yeah. But, and those are only small, uh, small examples, yeah. to say. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But we don't, we, have no, we don't know what that, it's a black box to us. Yeah. You know, it just appears to us and we're not, you know, we're not thinking. Well, why did I? Why? Why am I seeing exactly these stories yeah. or these tweets yeah. or whatever? Yeah. It seems somehow designed or whatever. But it, but I often, when I scroll through my Facebook, I'm not thinking. Oh, why am I seeing this now? Or, or how is this being decided? Yeah, you know? yeah, no, so, true, true. But it's driving your behavior in ways that you don't necessarily uh, think yeah. about. So. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, yeah. Thanks for your a lot for the time. Interview. Yeah, cool. Interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, oh. We'll do two uh, extra interviews, uh, two not extra interviews, two other interviews t uh, today. And of course, you can watch all the interviews on demand, on demand uh, through our uh, YouTube channel. Thanks. <laughs>